Botanically, this thing is a berry. The ruby jeweled arils, that's the technical term for the fleshy bits surrounding each one of the seeds, traditionally adorns dishes from Southern Europe, Northern Africa, and the Middle East. Generally described as tart and sweet, the actual flavor of pomegranate is more vegetal, if not woody or musty. These things have been pondered over for at least a few millennia, popping up in pretty much every major holy book at least once. The ancient Greeks saw them as a symbol of fertility. They play a major role in Rosh Hashanah. They're one of the three sacred fruits, according to Buddhists, and it's the apple of paradise in the Quran. Like Renaissance painters such as Botticelli pictured the Madonna and child holding a pomegranate, leading to them being seen as orbs of power. Now, I can't talk about pomegranates and cocktails without talking about that often maligned and misinterpreted cocktail ingredient, grenadine, which, when bought in a shop, is frequently nothing more than high fructose corn syrup and red food coloring, which is so far departed from what it was and what it still can be. So we should probably make some for ourselves. Just like every week, I break my drinks down into three sections. Super simple, where no special tools are required. Mega tasty, where a simple infusion or syrup is needed. And ultra fancy, where maximum effort is required. Before we make any drinks, we gotta do some prep. All right, so kicking off the mise en place is the one thing that pomegranates are known for, grenadine. It's supposed to be sweet and sharp with a slight tannic note, rather complex, but never overly fruity the way that a strawberry syrup would be. For such a complex syrup, it only takes five ingredients. Start by adding to a large bowl or container 300 grams of 100% pomegranate juice. You can buy this brand in most large supermarkets, but just make sure it's 100%. 50 grams of pomegranate molasses, which sounds fancy, but it really isn't. 2.5 grams of orange blossom water, 300 grams of caster sugar, and then 1% of the total weight in citric acid. For this case, it will be around about six and a half grams, and this can be found in most health food shops or pharmacists. Stir everything together for about 10 minutes until everything is well incorporated and the sugar has dissolved completely. No need to heat this up at all, just keep stirring. Once completely combined, stick it in a clean bottle, label, and keep in the fridge until needed. This stuff is great to spice up fizzy water or ginger ale, even Prosecco. And whilst that's chilling in the fridge, let's make a quick drink. So the first cocktail is Sangrita. Not Sangria, Sangrita. This is a great party starter and it's super useful to make up a picture of it when hosting a party. Remember those? It takes a little bit of effort to batch up, but it is well worth it. Start by juicing fresh oranges. Carton juice is fine, but fresh is better. Set the juice to one side and add to a large mixing jug. Two grams or a good pinch of sea salt. Two grams or a good few cracks of black pepper. 60 mils of that fresh pressed orange juice. 30 mils of fresh pressed lime juice. 40 mils of gom, which is a two to one sugar syrup, or alternatively, just 25 grams of caster sugar. Two big dashes of Tabasco or any hot sauce that you like. You can double it up if you like it extra spicy. Two dashes of Worcestershire sauce and 60 mils of pomegranate juice. Give this a good stir to combine everything. Give it a taste for balance and adjust to your preference. If it's too spicy, just add some more orange juice. Time to clear the decks. At this point, the Sangrita mix is ready to serve. Just chill the mix and pour into a shot glass. Into another shot glass, add a full measure of the delightful Tapatio Blanco, and that's it. You can shoot the tequila and then the Sangrita as a chaser, or sip them back and forth, whatever you want to do. It's a super delicious hip loosener that makes a kind of instant margarita in your mouth. You can even freeze the juice to make a kind of slushy or Sangrita Granita. I love it. You should too. Cheers. All right, so back in the prep kitchen, I've got a serious cordial to make. This borrows ideas from top lad and outstanding bartender, Will Meredith, link to his stuff down below. Now, have you ever had a salt baked sea bass? It kind of roasts in its own juices and becomes ludicrously tender and flavorful. Now I'm taking that process and applying it to pomegranates. To start this, make the salt coating in a large mixing bowl by adding 600 grams of table salt to two whole egg whites. 
Mix everything by hand until it becomes kind of like a savory meringue and it can stand by itself. Then pack this tightly around two whole pomegranates, the fresher the better. These ones are from the great guys at Natura and are stupid juicy. Packing the salt can be a bit of a tough task, but slowly build up to a two centimeter thick coating, making sure to cover any gaps. Place the salt covered pomegranates into a large baking tray and let rest for 15 minutes. Then pop them into a preheated oven at 190 degrees Celsius or gas mark five for one hour. Whilst these buttes are deliciously roasting in their own juices, I'll make another drink. The next drink is something of a cult classic, combining herbaceous vermouth with big juicy white rum. Don't let its appearance fool you. Although it ends up pink, this is a serious drink. To make this to a mixing glass or jar, add 40 mils of the delightful Sea Wolf rum, which is dry, funky with a little lick of vanilla. 10 mils of Cointreau or dry curacao. 20 mils of the killer Baldoria Bianco Vermouth, which is full of hedgerow herbs and citrus flavors. And then 10 mils of the Radhouse Grenadine that we made earlier. Add plenty of ice and stir for around 30 seconds or so until it becomes frosty and mellowed. Strain out into a frozen coupe or fancy glass, spritz orange oils over the top and garnish with a trimmed orange twist. Sip this and enjoy this deliciously complex and round cocktail that'll have you hankering for a midnight stroll on the beach. El Presidente. Cheers. All right, so checking back on those baked palms, after one hour in the oven and half an hour to cool down, you can see, unfortunately, they've both cracked open. That's not great, but we can still use them. That salt coating has baked into a hard crust that acts kind of like a pressure cooker. Crack open the crust and scoop out as much flesh and seeds as possible, whilst discarding the skins and anything that's covered in salt. You should be around 300 grams in total. Pass the scooped out flesh through a coarse sieve with the back of a spoon to separate out the juice from the seeds. This might take a little while, but stick with it. Now I've got this kind of loosely strained juice, add 200 grams of pomegranate juice, 150 grams of caster sugar, 50 grams of pomegranate molasses, eight grams of citric acid, 10 mils of absinthe, and 45 mils of slow gin. Stir everything until the sugar has dissolved. If it's still overwhelmingly salty, which it shouldn't be, add an extra two grams of citric acid and 35 grams of sugar. Then push the whole lot through a very fine 50 micron super bag or a few layers of muslin cloth. It might take a little while and a little elbow grease, but once filtered, bottle, label, pop in the fridge until needed later. Actually, I'll need that right now. Salt baked gimlet. This drink is presented very simply, but it is super complex. With a super fine balance, this thing is seriously impressive. To make this, add to a shaker tin, 60 mils of Porter's Tropical Old Tom Gin, which is flavored with passion fruit, guava, and white tea. To that, add 20 mils of our salt baked pomegranate cordial. Add plenty of ice and shake super hard until aggressively chilled, and then fine strain into a frozen, delicate cocktail glass or a few little nips after dinner. This tidy little number holds a fine balance between sweet, sour, salty, bitter, boozy, and soft. There's a lot going on here. But what did you expect? The salt baked gimlet. Cheers. So there you go team, three cocktails using the delightful pomegranate. Um, personally, I think a proper grenadine is a staple for any serious bar. Although um, the classic cocktails that call for grenadine are somewhat old or old fashioned and outdated. I guess, um, I guess they, they're in need of some modernizing, I guess. Um, maybe that's a video for the future. Uh, if you did enjoy what you saw, give us a thumbs up, stick a comment down below with the one thing that you wanna see me tackle in the future. If you haven't subscribed already, there's a little widget that pops up here. Give that a click and you'll be notified when new videos drop every week. Until next time, take it easy, be good, I love you, bye.